Hello there. My name is Ro McKechn. I've lived in Mandalay for 14 years and I've served on the HOA Board of Directors and on several committees. Currently, I co-chair the Quorum Committee. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully, it will help to inform you regarding the upcoming vote on the Quorum Amendment. So, why? Why are we voting to change the number of yes or affirmative votes necessary to make changes or amendments to our three HOA governing documents, the DCCRs or Declaration of Covenants, Conditions and Restrictions, the Articles of Incorporation and the Bylaws? The short answer is you, the homeowners. Over recent years, homeowners attending monthly HOA board meetings have expressed concern and sometimes even anger over unresolved issues in our Mandalay community. Let's talk about a few of them. Rental issues. Let's be fair. Not all landlords are irresponsible and not all renters are bad neighbors, but some are. And if you live next door to a problematic renter, you are not enjoying your home and you are not happy. Towing policies. Residents who violate parking rules create congestion in our streets and possible safety issues for residents who bike, walk, or who are disabled. Landscaping standards. Our current documents are unclear regarding standards, so enforcement is inconsistent. So, what's to be done and who is going to do it? The answer is this. We, the homeowners, must vote to amend our documents. The Board of Directors can only propose changes. The homeowners must pass them by ballot. You might ask, well, don't our current docs as written already address the rental, parking, landscaping, and other issues? The answer is no. Let's chat about a recent example. Many homeowners have expressed concern over Airbnb rentals springing up in Mandalay. Per our legal counsel, there is no explicit language in our governing documents that restricts lot owners from renting out their homes for short-term rentals. In fact, our current docs lack explicit language on a variety of issues that concern Mandalay homeowners. Remember, we are still operating under the 2004 Builder Developer Boilerplate Documents. So, how could the Quorum Amendment fit in here? Let's use the Airbnb issue as an example, but under the current voting configuration. Let's say the board proposes an amendment to the docs that prohibits Airbnbs on future home sales. That amendment is required to go out as a ballot to all 164 lot owners with proper notice of holding a special membership meeting for those homeowners. Under our current docs, 110 yes or affirmative votes are needed to pass the amendment. That's 66 and two thirds percent of the community. So let's say 105 lot owners vote yes, 30 lot owners vote no, 29 lot owners don't return the ballot. A total of 135 lot owners voted. Even though the majority of homeowners who voted want the amendment, it fails because 110 affirmative votes were not achieved. Mandalay's current voting requirement is a roadblock to solving problems and addressing issues in our community because the bar for voter participation and voter affirmative consensus is too high. How will the Quorum Amendment remedy this? Okay, same issue, Airbnbs, but let's change the numbers a bit. 75 lot owners vote yes, 30 lot owners vote no, 59 lot owners don't return the ballot. A total of 105 lot owners voted. 
The amendment passes because two-thirds of those who voted, in this case 70 or more, voted to pass the amendment. The quorum amendment empowers the homeowners who actually vote on an amendment, yes or no, to make decisions and to self-govern. Now, let's talk about some misconceptions regarding the quorum amendment and clear up some confusion. The amendment gives the board more power. Nope, only the homeowners can amend the governing documents by a community-wide written ballot held at a special membership meeting with 14 days written notice given and mailed out to all homeowners. How about a small number of homeowners at an HOA meeting will be able to make changes that affect all of us? Nope. Remember, written ballots, mailed out to all homeowners, special membership meeting, written notice of meeting 14 days in advance. Well, gee, what about all those lot owners who don't vote? Does this mean a very small group of homeowners who do vote would be able to make important changes? To even hold a special membership meeting, a quorum of at least 41 voting lot owners must be achieved in person and or by proxy. The amendment does not change this number. It represents 25% of the 164 lot owners. Historically, our quorums at the November annual membership meetings to elect directors and officers number in the high 40s to mid 50s. But here's what we need to keep in mind. The issue on the ballot drives voter participation. Some issues, sad to say, like the election of a board are mundane and don't draw significant participation. Other issues are debatable and there's higher voter turnout. Then, there are the hot, controversial issues that drive a high voter turnout. I would expect rental issues to fall into this latter category. Here's a real Mandalay example. On June 10th, 2014, the community held a ballot vote regarding gate closures. This vote was not to make any changes to our docks. It was held for the benefit of the board at that time to inform their board decision about closing the gates 24-7. 100 Mandalay lot owners voted on the issue of 24-7 gate closure. That is about 61% participation on a moderately controversial issue. So, why change how the vote is calculated at all? Why not address our issues one by one, amendment by amendment? If we try to change one issue at a time, one amendment at a time, we will need 110 yes or affirmative ballots each and every time. This would be an extremely challenging threshold to repeat time after time. It favors inaction and the status quo. It favors the apathy of those who don't vote over the participation of those who do. Let's take the long view here. Mandalay has other communities all around us. We are all competing for property value. We need to protect and improve our Mandalay property standards. And let's be clear-eyed. As available rental properties become fewer and home sale inventory drops lower, without strong rental policies, Mandalay becomes a ripe, juicy plum for investors. Your HOA Board of Directors works so hard to keep Mandalay a beautiful, safe, and desirable place in which to live. They always have. But there's a limit as to what they and we as homeowners can do with the documents as they are currently written. I urge every homeowner to vote yes on the proposed amendment to strengthen our three HOA governing documents. Please mail your ballot back to Argus, even if you plan to attend the September 22nd meeting. Let's move Mandalay forward. Thank you, keep safe, and keep healthy.